thank you again like for bearing out with us like till the end of the this this day and what a what an amazing way to end up but uh, this amazing group uh, so I will start with Roslyn yeah thank you uh, big round of applause for Roslyn uh, Karen Matt Matt from California so I, I told you that I'm gonna do that joke sorry uh, Simea and uh, no uh, please, if you can start introducing uh, for the ones that don't know you, who you are, like you can start and then you can ask your guests uh, to introduce themselves. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, cool. Uh, so my name is Noel um, and I am uh, in the agency business and have been for a very long time, but also involved with the WordPress community for even longer. Um, and I will have a lot of fun hosting this panel today. Matt? My name is Matt Cromwell. I'm one of the co-founders of GiveWP, the donation plugin for WordPress, and uh, now at StellarWP doing customer experience and marketing. So I'm Karen. I'm the co-founder from the agency Required. So we do um, design and WordPress development. And yeah, my domain is UX design, but I do also a lot of managing Managing stuff, yeah. Uh, I'm Simea, I'm part of Morntalk. Um, we mostly focus on content first platforms with WordPress, so that's like automating content, for example, from a publishing uh, company, and then you automate it to print. I'm also um, writing for Publishing Block, and that's also my domain, publishing. Uh, hi, everyone, Roslyn. I am from South Africa originally, uh, recently moved to Switzerland. I have been working, at, I started with WordPress and WooCommerce kind of from the freelancer side many, many years ago. And um, most recently I've worked mostly in the payments business. I currently work at WooCommerce um, within the payment partnerships team. Amazing. As you can see, it's a very diverse team um, or group uh, of panelists today that have a lot of experience and I hope we can yeah, get a very good conversation going that extends beyond this room and beyond this conversation today. Um, so zooming back or going back in time a bit, uh, I'd say over 10 years now, I created the first meetup group, uh, I think in Switzerland even, uh, with the meetup group Zurich. And at the time I had sent uh, one message to Sylvan over here at the back, who's waving. You can keep waving a little bit. And I said, hey, I'm gonna organize this group. Are you in? Might, question mark, exclamation mark, question mark. You must be kidding me. I thought of building a WordPress meetup in Zurich myself. Thanks for the work, I'm in, cheers. And uh, that's how these things begin, and that's amazing, and that's what I've always loved about this community, is how we've always you know, banded together for these things. Um, and WordPress has enjoyed a lot of growth since then. It's been really amazing, and we are coming up to the 20th year anniversary, which is quite crazy. In less than two months, May 27th, um, is the, the big day for 20 years. Uh, but in the recent years, we've also you know, seen a lot of change. Like these, these last couple of years with the pandemic, uh, with uh, the economic changes, uh, we've seen the technology landscape explode, collapse, come back up, and now there's a supposedly a revolution, I'm not gonna say any other words or keywords. Um, but we are here at the precipice of potentially something new or we continue with a lot of the old, who knows? Uh, so let's chat about this um, now. I'm gonna, Matt, I'm gonna start with you here and I'm gonna give you a, a bit of a, I'll, I'll give you the choice. Do you wanna go first or last? Last. <laughs> okay. Karen, we'll start with you. <laughs> you can blame Matt after. Yeah. So let, let, let's, let's get this going with, with a bit of uh, speed, let's say. I'll give you just you know, 10, 15 seconds or whatever to come up with three words that you think describe the future of WordPress in 2025. I knew I was going to keep this interesting. Okay. Just three words. words. Still community, AI, and UX design. Simea? Automation, content, usability. Wow. I think in my world I have to say payments. <laughs> <laughs> no bias. Uh, <clears throat> I think simplicity. Uh, 
and usability. Matt, you can't reuse any of the previous words. <laughs> that, was, that was the fate of your choice. <laughs> they took all my words. I don't know. Um, <laughs> all my words. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, AI, crap, okay. Um, <laughs> multilingual, hyphenated word, that's one word. Um, interactivity, plug-in marketplace. Wow, what a diversity in terms of responses. You know, sometimes you, you you know, I, 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 I'll often ask these kind of questions to kind of just spur the discussion, and it's, it's really great to see this, this, this range. Um, how, how, did, how does it feel, you know, listening to this and hearing, um, you know, the people here say what they're saying, how does it reflect on the original mission statement of democratizing publishing? What is, you know, how do you feel about democratizing publishing as it was meant then? And has it even changed? And if so, how? Any takers? Matt, you're nodding uh, vigorously. It's a good question. <laughs> I, I, I mean, what I would say is that publishing or content um, has evolved a ton over the years, and WordPress has to evolve with it. Um, I mentioned the interactivity API. They just are talking about it recently. Um, I think just that kind of focus on making content more interactive and more media rich is something we've been doing for a while, but I, I think there's just gonna be a lot more of that going forward. So the more that we can make content meaningful, media rich, interactive, um, the better um, that uh, going forward. Why does that tie back to democratizing publishing? Yeah, in, in terms of being able to be the type of content, the type of, type of publishing that people want to have. Uh, because that type of um, interactivity and media-rich aspects used to be really, really challenging and difficult to do. So bringing down the, the roadblocks um, to be able to do that more easily, um, I think, is really important. Simea? Um, well, from my point of view, I can see that Gutenberg is very important for our projects. So also the collaboration phase we're awaiting will be a tool that many people can use. And I think it's even bigger than the websites. That's also what, what Matt always talks about, but it's something we can see in our projects that um, the, the open source part has touched the web, but not really the publishing. Sometimes that's what I feel like. So um, automate, automating publishing is not an open source thing yet. And I think by being open source, you can, you can broaden like accessibility for everyone. Yeah, nice. Karen? Yeah, well, accessibility and also usability will be very strong in accessing the content. And that's, I think, publishing must be really uh, something which we should focus on also in the future. Um, but how, when you talk about content and also the public automation publishing, we should not forget the people who really use it. And so um, it can and have to improve this wise. So um, access more accessible content um, would be a good, do you You're hear okay. me? Sure. <laughs> would probably be a good, good thing. Do you think there's a, there's a difference between accessibility and, and the discovery of content? That, yeah. you know, like the entry points to a lot of content may be through a gated uh, social platform, let's say, or a gated AI platform or whatever, and that the, the, the democratization of that mm -hmm. is, is, is that part of the equation? Or is it really a lot of the on-site work? Or how do you, uh, you know, become, how do you live outside of these other platforms? Because you work with um, some clients that are obviously in the publishing space and have to own their content, but also they're very dependent on third-party platforms to Undemocratize them. Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, well, we see this trend that client wants to fully shift to social media and some clients want to just don't have their content on their website anymore. So they, they think of social media is something which is really accessible or visibility. And so they can just put in the content there and not on the website, which is a huge mistake. You, you should own your content and just use social media for, for visibility. But in terms of content managing, if you really do the work good on the content, then search engines, uh, doesn't matter if it's like from the web or from, say, the explore page of Instagram. If you do the accessible stuff, accessibility uh, on your content good, search engines, or um, yeah, something which will reach your yeah. content. So, Rosalyn, I think I have a, a slightly different angle on this, but yeah, I think um, there's a bit of a, t to me at least, um, democratizing kind of publishing and all of that. So it, to me, that's a lot about sort of putting the power in the community's hands a lot, and and how that kind of allows for the shaping of the environment to happen in a way that kind of follows to some extent what the industry and community of people are doing and how they're like shaping that. For me on a content side, I think I think what's interesting is when WordPress started, content was very specifically words. And I think that's now changing, sort of like what is content, like the definition of what content is, is evolving. Where it lives is evolving as well, I think, a lot. Um, and I think one of the key things for me as well is just the amount of discussion around who owns that content in what mm -hmm. environments. And I think you're right, there's, mm -hmm. there's democratizing kind of the way in which we actually publish this content, but then there's also the piece that I don't think we've properly solved is who owns it. And where does that ownership actually sit? Yeah, I think that's very interesting because from a customer point of view, a lot of that has been figured out by the industry in terms of enterprises owning their own customers, first party data, so on and so forth. But content is very spread out and not necessarily always owned uh, and in not, not necessarily owned inside of an open source platform. So potentially, you know, there's, a, there's opportunity for WordPress in these kind of environments to actually thrive. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting because part of what you were saying, uh, it, it felt like, you know, does WordPress have to play catch up or do we lead in, in this territory and, you know, drive the future of content uh, as opposed to try and chase it? Yeah, and is the platform flexible enough to do that? I think it makes it a bit messy as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sort of <laughs> the nature of what comes with open source a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but it, it it also means that you can actually move forward with it. And I think to some extent, WordPress has done well at being able to do that. For, you know, for 20 years, it's quite a long time in terms of technology for things to be changing. And it keeps up partially because of that flexibility, which makes it a little bit messy, but it also helps actually drive a lot of those things. Um, yeah, and, and I, th I think as, as we're looking to the future, certainly, again, from my perspective, from a bit of a payments and commerce, like I think there is a lot more of a merging of a commerce world and a content world and a publishing world, and like a lot of these worlds are now starting to come together a lot more. Um, Even like the way in which um, the trend you remind me of is the is the way social media is also getting more um, privatized or, or premium, having to pay for premium levels. And there's the counter trend of uh, the Fediverse um, that WordPress seems to be flirting with. They're very familiar with the Fediverse, like Mastodon, Things Just like explain this. It. The Fediverse is, is basically like a distributed um, way in which you can interact with content across multiple platforms. Um, and um, WordPress is, is getting its hand into there slowly. Um, Mastodon is probably the most familiar uh, version of that type of platform that maybe you might have heard of. When people were upset with Twitter, they jumped over to this 
this uh, Mastodon thing that uh, you have to have a server and it, it's a way to be able to own your own content that's basically social media content. Um, and um, uh, WordPress is starting to move into that a little bit as well um, with uh, Activity Hub. Um, it looks like yes. they're, they're uh, dabbling with that idea. Um, that's another form of democratizing publishing is making sure that we can also own our own social content um, that mm -hmm. might be hosted on our own website. Uh, switching gears just a little bit and, and taking this into consideration, and maybe Simea, I'll start with you. Um, how do you see your your job in relation to WordPress, you know, being different in two or three years? Like, what are you doing differently on, on a you know in a, in a re on a regular day? Well, I mean, we we do have coders in our agency, and there you can see that like we go from PHP to JS. We go from not only WordPress to Gutenberg, that's a central part of our work to try and, and optimize not only the, the website itself, but also the backend. And I can see that our clients are not only the people using the website, but also the people um, filling the website. And that's part of what we try to focus on. And I think that's what will be important, as you said, there will be many different use cases for WordPress. So we have to, as agencies, do our best to make the backend also respond to that. Um, we try to hide everything that you don't need. Um, so, so I think usability in the backend will be a big part of what we have to focus on. Also, if you look at other CMSs that may not be open source but still are there, they do this better, I think, and we have to keep up with that. Yeah, makes sense. Karen, how's your day-to-day -day changing in a couple of years? Well, I would say my day-to-day -day basically would not change that much. We know you're the boss. Because I'm the boss, <laughs> so I will still manage. A manage, managing task won't be different, I would say. But our agency will probably change. It has been already changed, so different skills, different people more diversity, um, but yeah, we will see in the future, maybe we will be faster because there is a, a search, a certain AI thing which will help us be faster in coding. Um, performance has to be something which we should focus on. And yeah, maybe we will hire different people, different skill set, we, we don't know. Not in two years, but maybe in five. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like whenever we, we, there's predictions of like, eh, maybe not in two years, but maybe in five, it's usually <laughs> like in one year. <laughs> so see. We'll, we'll see. We will see. <laughs> Rosalind? Uh, How's your day, day, day to day going to change? Like in two, three years, you, you feel in, in, in the WordPress space, what will you be doing differently, if anything at all? Is this all hype? Is this, are we just, you know, everything is normal? <laughs> everything is going to be the same. Uh, I, I think in my, uh, again, because I come from a world that like lives a little bit more in the commerce space, the economic impact of the crazy COVID spike and the drop from that afterwards, I would like, I, I don't think we've seen the end of that trend. Mm. And I think that's going to be more and more felt. If we're talking sort of two, three years, I think there's there's a lot more focus on, interestingly, there's a lot more focus that I see on on data and understanding customers with the, with the premise of trying to listen to customers more, but a lot of the time that involves having more data about your customers, which is an interesting paradigm to try and deal with, particularly in an open source world. Um, I think there's a lot more focus on prioritization and being able to justify what you're doing and why you're doing it, which is a lot of the time kind of driven by the economic factors. And I would imagine that like broadly in the industry, that's going to be felt to some extent as well, because 
clients are struggling more if they're not growing as fast as they were or what they've predicted or whatever. Um, so I, I, I definitely, from a day-to-day -day perspective, that's, that's, that's my experience of it so far, and I would imagine that that's going to continue at least for the end. I think we're at the start of that, not at the yeah, end. Yeah, that makes sense. Matt? Um, yeah, I mean, I will say for sure that on the day-to-day, -day, um, chat GPT specifically has changed a lot of the ways that we think about how we generate content or ideas or research. Um, and I think that's going to continue. I really see everything related to AI being like um, synonymous with like email, at, like in terms of tool set. It's going to be really fundamental to the way folks uh, interact, generally speaking. Uh, I, I don't see it as a fad. Um, I'll watch this video in two years to see if I eat my words. But, <laughs> six um, months. Yeah, or six <laughs> months. But um, I also agree a lot with the, the, the focus on data um, in e-commerce and donations in marketing. Uh, data is more and more important. It's been a lot more accessible for lo uh, smaller businesses to be able to collect data. And Europe is doing a really good job of raising the privacy concerns of that. Um, and I don't think any tool, Google Analytics in particular, both Universal and GA4, have not really solved the problem of actionable um, website analytics that aren't violations of privacy. Uh, that, that problem is not solved. Um, and um, I hope it can start to be solved over the next couple of years. But data is definitely going to be um, a bigger and bigger concern and a bigger and bigger tool. Um, so how that evolves is going to be interesting for sure. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, just hearing you all speak about, you know, how, how, you, how you foresee your days. Years ago, Matt said, learn JavaScript mm -hmm. as the one thing. What would you tell the group here to learn today to be best positioned in a couple of years' time? Well, I'll leave it right back with you. What's the one word? Learn X. Yeah. Um. Mm. I told you guys it was going to be easy. Mm. <laughs> Personally, in the WordPress space, I think I would say learn marketing. That's what I would say, literally. I would say learn more JavaScript. Yeah. <laughs> better, be better at it. <laughs> yeah, that's I've been going for so many years. When does it end? <laughs> Do it better. Timia? <laughs> this is flat, but I'm, I'm going to say learn to learn because um, with AI and with ChatGPT, I, as a not coder, can go anywhere and ask, can you do this for me in WordPress? And it will do. But building new stuff will still use like our, our brains and our, our craft. So I would say learn to focus on what you can do. There's this great book I'm reading at the moment. It's called Deep Work. Um, some of you may know it, and, and it really struck my mind to, to realize that no matter how much AI we'll, ha we'll be having or how much automation there will be, we still need our ideas, we still need skills. So we can't lay back and say that we don't need a coder, AI will do that. So learn JavaScript and learn, learn to focus on what you can do. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a very interesting point because we... AI seems like this kind of scary thing that's come out of nowhere and you're excited and you're terrified, you're excited, you're terrified, you're not quite sure which emotion to feel. And ultimately, like, there's always been new technologies coming out and those new technologies enable us to learn new things. And, you know, I think maybe, because I felt similar to you where there's this very big jump in terms of something new coming around that I'm like, okay, I need to reprioritize how I kind of organize my day and do things to try and pick this up and then also do the other thing I'm doing because it's that important. Um, but yeah, it's a, you've worded it in a, in a different, very nice way and I, and I like to learn to learn. Rosalind? Yeah, I also like that. Um, also not, not a direct tool, but I probably learn whatever your children are doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I guess there's, <laughs> if, if it's a tool, probably like learn, it's an old school tool, but probably learn SQL, like if data is going to be the thing, 
understand how to know a bit more about data. But um, yeah, I feel like most most trends that we are going to experience in the next few years are probably whatever our children are doing. Yeah, that's probably fair enough. <laughs> and I, and I like that. TikTok is that what you mean? <laughs> Learn, learn SQL on TikTok. I don't Just run these queries. Have children, so I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's very interesting because obviously you know Karen brought up usability in, in various uh, fashions, and AI uh, tries to bring usability in a form of natural language, so you don't even need need to code anymore. You just speak in a natural format to the solution and say, hey, this is this is what you know I want, and it brings this whole no code kind of wave. And I feel like WordPress was at the very beginning of a lot of this no code end to end, right? Like you could go on a hosting company, say, hey, I want a site, you know, and then install plugins. It's not always the, you know, the greatest path, but you're learning and you're still not writing any code and you're launching a website and there's, you have a theme and you've gone from one end of the spectrum to completely the other end of the spectrum without using a third party or proprietary tool. And that's a, a, a wonderful thing. How does WordPress stay relevant in that space in the coming years? And I think that you know this comes back a bit to what you say. You know, like, are, are we going to are we chasing this thing or are we leading? Like, how do we? What's, what's what do we have to do? It's a very easy question. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's very. <laughs> any it's any a, takers? It's a very general question. Uh, for me, what I, at least the the sort of like high level trend that I feel like is is happening is a lot more niche focus, like figuring out your specific thing that you're better at. And to me, that's, there's, there's, like in the early days, it was just a case of, you know, if you could, if you could put a website together, you were leaps and bounds ahead of most people. If you could just like do it in a vaguely usable way, in a way that people could see that now we're, we have a lot more knowledge of what good looks like in the context of publishing and websites and commerce and any of these things. So it's become a lot more that the default state is already a lot better and there's already quite a lot of like standards that exist within that. So it becomes a little bit of how are you answering a specific niche? And like, I, so. I think uh, for me at least, like WordPress stays relevant by agencies becoming better at becoming more niche and being able to target WordPress to work specifically for those niche areas. But I think there's a lot to me that, that there's, there's like it, it's, a, it's a layer on top almost of what WordPress is. If, if I can dig in, um, one of the challenges that I, I feel that WordPress has, and, I, and I'm sure it's been felt by a lot of people in this room, is that WordPress is everything to everybody yeah. and you know fails at product marketing for these niches and then that work is left to the agencies to then pick up and to try and then sell and, and then unsell the blogging thing and say look no this, this can actually do all the things you want you know uh, it can do headless it can do all that and you know we've, we've missed opportunities in the past you know is, is that is that something that you know WordPress has to address directly or is that still on the shoulders of agencies to take on? Yeah, I, th I mean, it's a good question. I think there's there's probably a bit of a perception lag. <laughs> that is, the <laughs> it's a very nice way of putting that. <laughs> which, which I mean, is a bit of a human trend, right? Like you, sure. <laughs> you, 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 you tend to have that recency issue of like you think something is still ten years ago when, in actual fact, it's moved on from that. So yes. it can do a lot more. But are we good at actually promoting that fact? Um, probably not. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Matt, remember the original question? Um, the essentially the question, you know, restate it. Go ahead. Uh, I thought you were like a chat GPT where you start a conversation and you're like I you do, compound. but it gets messed up in translation. So uh, f fair enough. Uh, what what can WordPress do to stay relevant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you and I were chatting earlier. Yeah. It's like the next couple of years of WordPress, in terms of WordPress core, we know exactly what's going on there. And it's it's gonna be emphasis on multi-collaboration and multilingual, which I think are great and fine. Um, but it's not necessarily the thing that's going to continue to keep WordPress relevant. Um, 
uh, I think it opens up a lot of doors for multilingual. I think the focus on there is going to be great in, in terms of like even in the states, which is very traditionally very unilingual. Um, uh, they definitely should be. That's a, is it a word? I don't know. Um, like monolingual. Monolingual is probably <laughs> it sounds better. Sounds even worse. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> they they ha they should be doing a lot more English Spanish sites, for example, as an example, yeah. and that could help elevate that. But I think in terms of like pushing uh, WordPress into the future, I have a lot of faith and belief in the plugin space. Um, that's where innovation is is going to be. It's a gift and a challenge. The plugin space is also uh, a big problem for WordPress in terms of perception. Uh, when you in, in get into a WordPress website and you see a giant wall of advertisements, that's not fun. Um, but, um, but in terms of how WordPress is going to evolve, we have this great pattern of WordPress has feature plugins, for example, which are not part of core but are being considered in one way or another. I like the way that that um, sets up uh, innovation to be kind of in this test ground area uh, for a little bit. Um, so I, I am hoping that um, when it comes to AI in particular or other types of cutting edge things, it's going to keep WordPress relevant, that it's going to be the plugin space that leads in that department and says, here's a great idea and this is a way that we can be doing this and that maybe ideally, hopefully, um, folks in um, core development can uh, be paying attention and start treating that as good territory for feature plugins. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's almost the undefeatable moat or wall that WordPress has around it in terms of its momentum to be able to react to any, let's say, new technology. So I have no idea how many AI-related plugins are waiting for review uh, on the .org uh, site, but I've, you know, I, I feel very sorry for the people reviewing, as there must be an absolute ton in there right now. I think it's something like 300. Um, so yeah, it's quite a bit. Karen? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I actually don't know what WordPress can do to stay le re relevant, but I know what we all can do to stay, to let WordPress stay le relevant. So everyone, even if you are a um, freelancer or an agency, it's um, relevant how we use WordPress and how we market WordPress to our clients and how we tell them that WordPress can be awesome and can be customized. So the picture of our WordPress is just a blogging uh, concept um, should be more, um, we should speak out to our clients that we can customize WordPress and WordPress can be very flexible and that people know and everything will follow. We are a community, so it's in our hands what we do with the open source platform. So yes. everyone should contribute somehow. <laughs> yeah, good answer. Simea? I mean, I can only agree. Um, I think. Yeah, there's some good stuff here. It's, it's yeah, hard to like, yeah. throw some new stuff in there. <laughs> um, I, I think we should uh, like know what, what's coming in the core, as you said, the things that, that are waiting in, in the Gutenberg phase in th three and four will be important and will be nice. Um, but it's not what, what will keep WordPress relevant. I think we should have high demands for our skills as, as agencies, as plugin providers. So I'm not going to add a new point because I just agree with all of you. That totally works. But, but just have high demands for ourselves. I think that's, that's very important because we, we maybe sometimes tend to wait for the core and that's not going to be what what will make WordPress relevant in the end, I think. It, it's what keeps WordPress stable and alive, but not what keeps WordPress ahead. That's a great way of differentiating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, future, present, past, I can, yeah. I, I can add one Please. more, actually, which is probably your one from earlier, which is uh, at least something that I would like to see is more customization on the actual admin side of things. Yeah. I feel like a lot is focused on the front-end side, but to some extent, like, mm. If you install WordPress, posts are still at the top of the menu. You know, it's sort of no wonder people still see it as like hey, a, that's a plugin. What we use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but I think that that's you know like having customization that can 
speak to a niche audience, not just from the front end and what's happening on a user side, but also in terms of how it's actually being managed on the back end and on the admin side. So, yeah, I'm sort of looking forward to a world where Gutenberg exists in the back end as well and is not just a, <laughs> just a it front end. Sounds like total chaos. I love it. It sounds like chaos, <laughs> but, but at the we same like time, I'm like, I want to be able to hide things. I want to, you know, yeah. you want part, part of the, the problem I spoke to about the plugins and the wall of advertisements is also because of the limitations of how non-customizable the admin is. Yeah. The plugins only have a couple good, decent options right now. Um, and not that we, not that plugins need more options, because if you give us more, we'll take more. Um, <laughs> but if we, there was a more systemized way to surface things and not be so obtrusive, um, then uh, that would definitely benefit the user a lot more. Yeah. As a side note, I think uh, with my first like serious paid client in like 2009 or so, um, I hid everything and then renamed posts to news. And so when they logged in, they only saw one thing in the menu. That's it. They only saw news. And they're like, oh, this is such an easy system to use. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm glad you like it. This is WordPress. It's simple to use. <laughs> you, you do have to put in the work to, as you say, customize the front, but then customize the back. Um, it, it's... WordPress walks this line sometimes of being this out-of-the-box solution, but then also something you want to tailor for clients. And when you're tailoring something for your clients, that's a, an experience you have to create as opposed to the default one that WordPress uh, gives you. And it's, yeah, it's challenging, but I, you know, I agree, like, it's, it's, it's come to this size now where you, yeah. it's, it's, it's just too big. It has to have a bit more uh, optionality there. Let's switch gears a bit and flip, flip this upside down, maybe, and... Uh, maybe ask the question, you know, looking into the future, maybe what's your most controversial take? And by controversial, I mean, what is the one thing you would predict for the future of WordPress, you know, 2025 or even beyond, that you feel most people in this room would disagree with you on? <laughs> that is the definition. <laughs> Any first takers? How many people do you want to sit next to you for dinner after? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a statement I quite like. I'm not sure people would disagree with it, but... Um, Be controversial? Don't know. Oh. <laughs> so, just in, the, like, general kind of tech space, e-commerce space, whatever, um, my sort of take on this is that every tech company wants to be a payment company or is trying to be a payment company and every payment company is trying to be a bank. Ultimately, that's like mm -hmm. the direction. Everyone, everyone wants to own the, the transaction and everyone wants to be able to then offer additional things on top of oh that. It's like the... Yeah, so I, see, I see what you mean. Don't know if it's going to be controversial yeah, yeah, yeah. necessarily, but... <laughs> I'm still looking for a bit more controversy. <laughs> Who wants to win an award? Or be very popular tonight? So I have one. Okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> in two years, WordPress will not be open source anymore. Oh. How about Is that, that really a prediction or a worry or a fear? Uh, or all of the above? All, all the <laughs> Okay. A prediction. I, I'm not even going to dig into that because I think that's a great one for, uh, for, for people to come up to you and un just unpack. <laughs> <laughs> We are, we are running a bit short on time, so we're going to power through. Um, I would say, um, I don't know if this is a prediction. Uh, I guess it is. Um, essentially, if WordPress.org doesn't help plugins and themes start to have better data, then somebody else is going to solve that problem, and you may or may not like it. Um, but it is a problem that plugin authors and theme authors have and need. And if they're all trying to solve it individually, it gets worse for the user. Um, so somebody needs to solve that problem because .org so far isn't. Simeo? Will you sit by me at dinner? No, I've, I've, <laughs> I'm somewhere else now. <laughs> Maybe we all just sit together at this point. Yeah. Maybe a subject we, we touched is, is AI, and obviously what people are thinking is that customization coding will be easier, and our work will be almost relaxing. Yeah. But I think it will be the opposite. Like, once everyone can use ChatGPT, we will have to even 
be better. So I think things will not be easier, they will be harder. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, I like that take. <laughs> Let's open up for Q&A, since we're... Uh, oh, we, we'll, my, uh, I knew you were going to... Prediction or what? Or uh, Which piece? Your controversial thing that makes nobody sit by you. <laughs> yep. uh, I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it. No, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the model. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I get enough trouble. I already got in trouble this year. Q&A. Oh, at the very back. So just walking around the conference, we've heard maybe seven languages and several dialects. So the problem is not only language, Matt, but it's the dialects. Now, you mentioned the United States. In Southern California, just in Los Angeles County, there are 177 formal languages spoken, plus dialects. How many people in the room know that Mayan is still an active language? The first time I heard somebody speak Mayan it was my next door neighbor. So the, the problem of languages has to be solved in the written form first, and then we go from there into dialects. So your comments about language, in the it's specifically in the States, it just slams us. Here in Europe, you have borders that pretty much define languages, right? And then it's pan-European. In the United States, we've fought with languages for years and years and years. And if, my, if WordPress can help us solve that, it will just be tremendous. Great comment, so thank you. Questions? I will say about oh, that, sorry, that I, will, I will add to that, that I think the real solution is not WordPress. I do think it's AI, actually. AI is going to be the thing that helps us do multilingual in a way that's, that's seamless, um, in a way. Say open source AI. Open source AI. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that will help us. It, it'll be built into browsers. It'll be something that just happens. Um, but um, being multi localization of your website helps you control that translation better. So there's like the default way that your website could be translated. And then there's the like curated way that I, wa I want my site to be gorgeous in Mayan, not just uh, translatable. So. I have a short comment and a question, which probably goes beyond 2025. The comment is, I'm amazed I didn't hear the keyword security yeah. in the first round, especially from the payment side yeah. <laughs> or the plug-in side. And now my question with the Gutenberg uh, editor based on blocks. Blocks are loosely speaking relational. Do you think there is hope that there will be a cleaner database design in the future? Or do people just not care what the database looks in the back end? Well, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I mean, I, I might take a small stab at that because I love uh, structured content or the lack thereof. And we, we, we talk a lot about that inside our own company. And especially with the rise of AI, structured content in some ways becomes less relevant because AI is smart enough to parse through the content without having to have structure. Um, so it's, it's, it's actually, you know, to what level does structured content actually need to manifest itself? Um, and there are ways to connect blocks to each other, or to have one-to-one -one relationships or one-to-many relationships. Um, there are certainly plugins out there to handle these things, but you're, you're right in the sense that the way that the model, the content model, as it's presented with blog posts and, um, and how it's perceived is, is, is certainly a challenge, but I personally feel it's more of a product marketing one than a structural one where people are hitting hard limits and hard bounds. You're welcome. Okay, we have time for one more question. Again, make it count. Oh yeah, there's a question over there. Just let's wait for the mic. <laughs> wow, thank you. Um, somebody said this already on the panel, but I think the, the back office, the back end, the addition um, is a key 
For example, we have a client, we did a WooCommerce website for them, and then they want to move out because of the complexity of having his staff managing the articles in the back office. And I think that, like going to PrestaShop or something else, which is designed for this specific purpose. And I think WordPress is great for flexibility, but in terms of the design of the back office, it's still weak, I think. And having in the core, maybe, also a roadmap for uh, being able to full site edit the back office, let's say, would be very interesting. Because it's a, it's a feature we can do as developers, but many people cannot access easily to this, um, to this feature. And I think, like you said, like hiding everything which is not relevant and simplifying the, the interface is becoming a standard for on many online products. And I think it's a very important aspect. Team takers? Yeah, I guess uh, agree. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's uh, at at least my my impression of it is that uh, it a lot of the, a lot of it can be done. There are things that can be done, but it's it's probably at the moment just too time consuming and too expensive. So you end up not doing it, and you end up coming with a whole bunch of rules. You know, oh, when you know if it's called a post, you're actually doing this, and you, you, you know, like just ignore the fact that it's called posts. It's actually doing something else, or it's you know. So um, I think I think the the ability to customize more to what that niche requirement is 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 kind of it's becoming more expected, and I think this is both from a customer perspective, but also from the client perspective, of people are no longer willing to have. A hundred rules or a hundred like pages of documentation that they need to be able to understand in order to do things. Like they want that convenience and they want the ability for different systems to talk to each other. I think we're talking about language, but there's there's a there's a system language problem as well of you know the the different blocks, the different areas, the different plugins. Like things don't talk to each other very well um, because it's like there's so much. I guess um, so. I, I th that was probably my reason for my word simplicity of like figuring out how we actually get these things yeah. to talk a bit better and allow clients and customers to be able to actually interact with those things in a more simple way feels like a really important step that we really haven't figured out yet. <laughs> and, I, and I think one of those key points that you, you, you brought up is that, look, it is possible, but it's just really time consuming and expensive yeah. to do. And that's, that is a, 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 an important factor now. It wasn't 20 years ago or 10 years ago or whatever. So yeah, yep. this concludes our session. I really want to thank Roslyn, Simea, Karen, and Matt for participating. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you. Wow, thank you.